Follow me on Instagram and get access to a lot of exclusive content and short videos that are never released to the YouTube public at Tiny Boat Nation. What's up everyone? Today I get to answer the question I get asked the most frequently out of any question out there. How much does it cost? How much does it build? Can you make a list and please provide it to me? So I just so happened to have a line item list that I actually sat down as I was thinking of you all and I made it. Surprise myself even a little bit. So after we review this list, it's gonna be down in the description area of this video. So you just expand the description area with the little arrow or the show more icon, and it'll all be there for you at your disposal. This is what I do for my projects. Now everybody else's projects out there, they're doing whatever they're doing, but this is for us. This is based off the Lund. So more or less we're basing the whole off of a 14 foot boat, uh, doing it this way, um, this is more or less Kind of the platform on what we're basing this off of and this is really the platform of materials that i'm going to be using from now on also check me out on patreon free decal for anybody who signs up in the insider or above tier so check it out it's up here exclusive audience who helps really fund the bulk of what we do here and in return i give them a lot of exclusive content and a lot of extra stuff a lot of extra help to include one-on-one -on -one coaching and a few other cool things to include a private form that we have there that is only for patrons. And so check it out. Okay, so the first step is framing out the boat. And so that means all I'm gonna be using now for framing is aluminum. It's 1 16th inch thin uh, by 1.5 inch angle is the main basis. And I also get uh, 3 4 angle and I also get 3 4 inch uh, tubing, all the same thickness. For people who need the millimeter measurement of thickness, it's 0 0.067. For me, I have a metal shop. I'm pretty lucky down here. So it's 2250 for a 16 foot stick of angle. I spend quite a bit of money in fasteners at this point, like really putting close to like a thousand rivets. And so we're spending anywhere, but well, we're actually putting more than that. So anywhere from like 50 to 100 bucks worth of just rivets alone. That's not to include stainless steel fasteners later that you're gonna use to re to retie the transom together or retie any other parts that, you know, rivets can't really do a good job for. Total estimated cost for just the framing and fasteners alone is between 550 to $600 plus. And that's uh, that's just with using 1 16th. So if you're using 1 8th, people who are sticking together 1 8th inch frames have to be paying like around $1,000 in just frame materials and that they're overworking themselves and it's the boat's overweight generally with a 1 8th, 1 16th inch frame. So when 1, when 1 8th inch frames makes sense that makes sense in a bigger boat, like 18 footer or bigger, like an actual boat that was meant for a, like a 90 or 150 horse motor. That's where like, you can put that much weight in a boat and you can make the boat like really super sturdy like that and it makes sense. It just doesn't make sense to do it in a tiny boat. So there's smarter places to get your aluminum. I would get it at a metal shop. I know a lot of people have said, well, Mike, metal shops don't carry 1 16th inch thin, all they carry is 1 8th. So you're gonna have to take a hit on there. Um, I know Lowe's and Home Depot sell it at the architectural grade, but it's a lot more expensive because um, you're paying a lot more money for less aluminum that's already cut. But if I ever run into a good online vendor that will sell 1 16th inch aluminum in bulk, I'm sure I can make that person a lot of money. So if you know anybody who would do that, pass the word on to have them come and contact me so I can provide it to every one of you. The next step would be foaming the boat. Really that could, it's gonna cost between 250 to $300 for you to foam your boat correctly, to put enough foam in it for structural rigidity and reserve buoyancy and generally it's a combination so the three that i have used is i've obviously used pool noodles i use polystyrene sheeting a lot of people use pink foam board sheeting which is even better i just don't have it in here in my region and uh obviously the two-part polyurethane pour foam i've just been using a combination of pork foam and styrofoam in spots where they've been effective i've tried to stop using noodles completely uh for a lot of reasons for one they don't take up as much density there's just no way two they're structurally very poor all they do is just fill up voided mass and they're good for that but uh if they're exposed to heat or water for any period of time they start to decompose they don't rot they don't mold but they decompose uh rather quickly so i think they're like the worst out of all of them to use the funny thing is you don't actually save money going either way if you just chose to like go just one way just all pool noodles or all styrofoam or all pour foam you end up spending about the same amount of money foam is just expensive no matter what it is but you do need it to be safe step three is the wiring you're probably doing this throughout step one and two but step three you're really trying to finalize it before the paneling and the decking there's 15 items i feel are must have with a range from 385 to 420 dollars on up so it's a little expensive but it has to be done right there's only one thing 
that I could think of that's as terrible as an electrical failure on a boat out there, and that's like losing your PB right at the boat. It's, it's on that level of terribleness. Item one, 14 gauge duplex wire for everything. You can get them in individual spools, you'll need 100 feet of each, but if you just get 100 feet of duplex wire, it's just one strand with both wires in it, way easier to use. I'm running five amp fuses with 14 gauge wire. Uh, it's all marine grade tin copper uh, wire from Anchor Marine. It works on everything, I love it. I'm running eight gauge to six gauge uh, marine grade wire for the trolling motor or the battery starter wire to the motor or to the uh, the fuse block bus bar combo. I just generally run six gauge, six gauge is just better. The more wire, it's gonna run cooler, less chance of a failure over time. So I just, I generally just go with like a 25 foot roll of six gauge duplex for that. I use a blue C systems, 12 link fuse block slash bus bar combo. You know, that thing's it by itself is 50 bucks, but it's a lifesaver. It makes wiring substantially easier for you, way easier for you. Uh, any additional tin copper bus bars you need to run is additional fingers out to uh, mask clumps of LEDs or mask clumps of other accessories you have going on. Uh, those are going to run you about 20 bucks a piece. Switch panel, you can get a blue fire system switch panel that does it all for about 45 bucks. Pretty nice. Get it done, but if you want to start running your own individual switches and your own individual panel and you want to start doing things a little differently, it can get expensive. You can get most things done in a six gang panel. If you want to get an eight gang panel with eight switches, uh, that's just more option, more variety for you. You also need a master switch. You need post covers, you need battery lugs, uh, you need wire looming, you need grommets, cable glands, which are better than grommets. And uh, a bigger part of it that's gonna cost you about a hundred bucks by itself is all the connectors. Whether it's heat shrink, like crimping connectors, or if it's the self-soldering heat shrink connectors like they're all pretty expensive you probably need a, big, a good combination of both of them and that'll get it done and then that's it for wiring for the deck the hatches and compartments uh all the all the stuff that you would need to really make it nice and poppy and fancy i have standard struts you know they come in a bulk pack they're pretty cheap but if you're not running dry hatches they rust so at that point in time i would go to somewhere like boat outfitters that has uh marine grade struts and they also have them in different poundage limits uh, the ones you buy in my store are going to be 22.5 pound and that's needed for some very heavy hatches but really for small hatches it's not really needed like a 10 pound strut would do a lot better you probably would have a lot better results the totes that i use the hcpe totes those are expensive anywhere between 10 20 bucks on up depending on which one you want how fancy you want to get i mean it's 60 bucks to 100 bucks just for that by the time you're done buying them all so that's pretty expensive Pull latches are about five bucks per latch. Any, can, you know, slam latches are about 10 to 15 bucks per latch. You know, cam lever latches are between 30 and $40 per latch. <sighs> so the latches, and a lot of people run like the, the nylon webbing, not a fan of that. Like what if a hook got stuck in that? You would take forever to get it out. You can do that too. That's substantially cheaper than any of what we just talked about. But I use PVC for the rod tubes. Um, a lot of people use golf cart tubes, which are actually way lighter. I just can, they're really expensive and they're never in the length I need, so I have always just used PVC. We're just using standard plywood, standard fur rated plywood from Lowe's or Home Depot. It's between 20 and $30 a sheet, and I can generally get a boat done in, with a sheet and a half of it, and that's just using it for the deck. You're gonna get like side paneling, that's another thing. I forgot to include that in the total aluminum cost, but. I try and run 3 16th inch hardwood plywood. That's the thinnest plywood sheet that I can find and I like to run that for side panels because it's just facing side panels. Or if I can find 0 0.025 inch aluminum that's even lighter and longer lasting and I like to use that for side panels but that's about 80 bucks for a four by 10 foot sheet of it over here, which is really not that bad, but it is what it is. So versus like 15 to 20 bucks for a four by eight sheet of wood. So it can get really expensive or it can not. It's, even with just wood deck, it's still between 435 to 450 bucks on the low high estimate and it can go all the way up to 500 and up as we just, as we kind of talked about. I also get a lot of questions about how I secure the deck. I secure the deck with like one inch or 1.5 inch pop rivets and I kind of do it very tactically. If I can go underneath the frame and screw into the deck from underneath the frame, that's the ultimate way to hide them if you can do it. It's hard to do that in certain sections though. So we're generally running rivets through the top and covering up, covering them up after with, with carpet, like glued on top of the rivet. It's 
pretty sweet. For nice decking and carpet materials, you're not going to get anything away with anything less than $200, $300 anyways. I'd say, I would say 20 ounce marine grade carpet with a rubber backing is uh, pretty nice, but that's going to run you between $200, $300 depending on how much you need for your actual build. So an 8 by 15 or an 8 by 20 foot roll of that stuff should definitely should generally do your whole boat. If that's uh, not something, if carpet's not what you want to do and you like that matting, there's EVA foam matting, like the HydroTurf matting, that's... Seventy five to eighty dollars. There's also teak decking, which is a matting, which looks pretty cool. That's a synthetic matting. All those range between seventy five and eighty dollars per a roll. You'll generally need two to three of those rolls, so you really don't get. You know, there's no cost benefit ratio from carpet to EVA foam. It's just a preference. I for one don't like C deck. I think it wears out pretty quickly and it looks like shit. Somehow, despite carpet being carpet, I think it holds out better. I also use gator skins a lot for the subfloor. I think it's the best stuff you can use for the subfloor because one, it's like, it can never get saturated by water. It's UV resistant. It's super, it's like bulletproof stuff. It'll never stand. You can seal it against the hull to create bleed off channels. That I love it. So I generally use it for the subfloor and uh, the top of the bow mount or any sort of side panels where there's a lot of high traffic. I like to use gator skins. It's going to outlast everything else. It's going to outlast EVA foam and it's going to outlast carpet by far. And that can be expensive from one to two hundred dollars just for sections of that, but it's worth it. So, so really, we're looking at an average of between four to five hundred dollars for pretty much every venue we've hit. Uh, the, the less expensive ones here are uh, LED lights, like nav lights, courtesy lights, front nav. You know, you spend fourteen to twenty bucks for like a bulk pack of those. The front nav light and the base. Uh, along with a rear nav light in the base or both between 30 and 40 bucks for both You're just gonna have to pay that much money for the initial investment None of us tell you the one running is the live well so for I got it Mac, marked here I'm actually very surprised so between 250 and 300 dollars for the add-ons actually gonna be demoing a new live wall kit that for pretty much the same price is a whole lot better but this is how I've been doing them yeah, I've, been, I've been trying to run Johnson pumps from now. I've, I've been trying to stay away from Adwood because I've been getting a lot of bad reviews. I haven't never had one personally fail on me, but people say they, they some of them last forever, like five years, some of them die in seconds. So the quality is inconsistent. So I just recommend Johnson pumps or roll pumps for your live oil research pumps because those are generally pretty solid. I mean, their name stands alone. It's pretty good right there. With those items there, you can get pretty far. Now, extra items would be a live wall timer, which is substantially useful. I love it. And the VT2 systems, also, I love it. Like, I know those are extra add-ons. You don't absolutely need them, but if you're going to make a live well and you want it to, like, hold fish, like, my live well systems, they keep fish alive. Uh, I've, I've, in the few tournaments that I have participated, everybody else's fish is, like, half dead. My fish are, like, sassy and ready to kick and ready to take off when I release them. So it's, uh... If you're gonna put a live one, you're actually gonna try and win tournament with live fish, it matters. So low end, we're looking really 2200 plus. High end, we're looking at 2500, all the way up. You can easily go up to like three grand over, especially if you're going through synthetic composite board decking. I didn't talk about that, like CUSA board or carbon core, or if you wanna do straight aluminum. I may end up doing all aluminum decking for the 12 foot Jumbo. So we're going to do that. I'm going to do a pretty extensive cost analysis on that. But uh, really, it costs money to do them the way you see them here. This is just, you know, I spend that much money over a period of time, over a period of months, eventually ends up to that. So however long it takes you to get there is however long it takes you to get there. But that's what it takes to put that. So then some of you might come to the question, why don't I just go get a used bass boat? That's up to you. If you think you can get past it all and just go get a used boat and be just as happy, that's fine. So, um... But if you're gonna take on a project like this, you need it to have your life and the life of your family and your friends and your loved ones at, at heart. And you really need to pay special attention to what you put in your boat. Cause that's really, really determines the outcome of how long your kit will last and how well it will perform on the water. That uh, you can make any boat look nice. Right. And I gotta tell you, there's a reason I don't use wood for frames anymore. And there's a reason I don't do a lot of things anymore. Um, I'm pretty comfortable releasing this video now. I don't think a whole lot of it will change um, So this should be pretty consistent for you guys. That's my cost matrix I hope it was very beneficial to you and you can definitely check it down here Also check out my Amazon store because it is everything we talked about in the list is based off of those prices and it's in my store If you find it cheaper, they'll let me know
and I'll try and put it in my store. Appreciate it guys, thank you. If you wanted to see any of my projects, if you ever watched a demoed video and wonder why does he go more in depth, just know that I did go more in depth, it's all on my channel. Every last boat that I ever put out has its own playlist full of videos of in-depth anything you need to know, it's all there. Also check out my perks, guys, check out Patreon, my store, my link, subscribe. See you out there, guys, thanks.